In the past couple of videos, we've been showcasing a lot of really cool techniques for cyber deception. We've been laying traps for hackers, threat actors, cyber criminals, and adversaries, trying to fool them and deceive them and waste their time so that we can better respond. We've been deploying tools like Spider Trap, we've been showcasing Cowrie for some honeypots, Canary Tokens to get notified when things go weird, and Port Spoof to kind of change up our attack surface. Now, not all of these require all this tooling or some external software where you can bring in. A couple of them are just kind of interesting ideas where you want to purposefully create fake environments so that the hackers will waste their time. Maybe we could set up some shares like SMB shares. We'll get notified, hey, when someone tries to access it or do any impact it stuff in the network. We could set up websites purpose built to do nothing other than just look like some other attack surface that the hacker might be able to go engage and try to beat up. And of course, all that ultimately relies on the detection capability, the visibility, the telemetry, things that we could actually see and audit. If anything, I want to get you thinking about those ideas, just laying mouse traps. Now, a couple of those examples for the sake of a demonstration aren't super flashy, like, hey, you know how to run a Python Flask server. You can spin up an SMB share and sort of collect any of the authentication attempts against it. But one that I thought would be really worthwhile to show, even if it is kind of simple because you can do so much more with it, is setting up a Honey user. We could go ahead and create a fake account or multiple and then try to alert or trigger off when some hacker tries to interact with it. So for this lab and activity, we'll go ahead and set up our own SIEM, or SIM, however you want to say it, right? The Security Information and Event Management Center, or software, we'll just do a simple poor man's representation, like just using regular built-in Windows tools. And we'll get an alert, or just see some of the visibility and telemetry whenever a Honey account or a dedicated specific local user is accessed. And by the way, all of these activities, all these labs, all these exercises, sort of demos and walkthroughs that I'm showcasing here, you can find these online and you can play with them. You can access them. They're totally free. They're all online on GitHub from John Strand and his GitHub repository for the Intro Labs repo. If I may say, just a quick call out, these are all from a lot of the pay what you can training courses and education material offered by Anti-Siphon Training. You can choose the price tag. You get to determine what you want to put forth here, but you can learn so much, whether it's Security Operations Center, PCI, Penetration, testing, and of course, some of the active defense and cyber deception. That is available oftentimes in their on-demand training, and they always have stuff that they're doing for live workshops and events. Totally go check it out if you're interested. Pay what you can, literally choose the price tag, link in the video description if you're interested in that. For this demonstration, I'm going to be inside of the virtual machine that again is freely available and offered with the pay what you can training. So I'll go ahead and open up a terminal. I'll hit control shift enter on my keyboard so that I can open that with an admin permissions. And now thanks to having this virtual machine already all staged and set up for us, I can just move into the C colon backslash tools directory. And that will have a whole lot of scripts and code that I could use to just simply set up this lab. Here's one script we could run 200 user gen dot bat. It's a batch script that will literally just go ahead and create a ton of fake users. Here I can cat that out on the screen and you can see it's just net user with the username and a random password over and over and over again, adding and creating those accounts. So let's fire it up. I will dot slash 200 user gen dot bat and it will run through and create all those accounts. Now, one of those users is our scapegoat user. He's the mousetrap. He's just, hey, completely useless, just kind of set there so that we could be able to detect and determine when any hacker, threat actor, or bad adversary starts to interact with it or tries to abuse that account. We need to be able to log that though and create visibility for it. So what we're gonna do is have a custom view set up within the Windows Event Viewer. Anytime that someone tries to log in as the Frank user, we want to be able to see that. Now, I haven't done this before. I think that's kind of cool, at least just creating a little custom view or filter within the Event Viewer. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll type in Event Viewer in my Windows Start bar here. And once we open this up, we can move into the Windows Logs and the Security Log, because that'll showcase a whole lot of the actions that are taken when a user might log in or interact or do something specifically. Over on the right-hand side, let's go ahead and click create custom view. 
and I want to toggle this over to the XML view. Now I'll zoom in here, but you can see the literal syntax that we might be able to use to filter, zoom in, or narrow down on any of the events, any things that added within the logs here of the Windows Event Viewer. Let me click on Edit Query Manually, and we can go ahead and use that. Rather than the Filter tab, let's just type in the syntax here, and now I could manipulate this. Let me delete all of it because our lab actually gives us the syntax that we need. It looks a lot like what we have here. We're just trying to, hey, take a look at the security log, but take a look here. If we scroll down to see the command and syntax that they offer here, we could actually build out our query that has a little bit of criteria where we say, hey, inside of the event data, I wanna make sure that the name has a target username of Frank. That's who we're looking for as our Honey user, right? So we can copy and paste this and go slap that into our event viewer. Let's go ahead and remove everything that was there previously and just paste this in. I'll hit Control V on my keyboard and hit OK. We'll call that Honey user. How about that? Just hit OK. All right, now we have a couple of logs here, just about uh, four of them as we were able to go ahead and create all of those accounts, right? When we ran our 200 user gen dot batch script, obviously, hey, we're going to see we're resetting an account password we're modifying the account when we create it and enable it, all of this. Now we are honed in on that Frank account, but we might be able to do a little bit more just like a threat actor would. Let's get back to our command line and let's say, I don't know, we want to be able to run a script here. So it's going to be a PowerShell script this time. We'll do a local password spray. So I will need to set the execution policy to remote sign. That way I should be able to actually, hey, run scripts that I have locally here. Now let me import import a module for our inside the current directory local password spray dot ps1. I'll hit enter on that and now we have a lot of new functions that are brought into the current scope because of this. In case you're ever curious of what those are, you could honestly just type in get command and that will show you all of the commands that PowerShell has ready for itself, but if we wanted to actually filter, we could probably pipe that to like a simple find string where we could just be looking for anything that has the local password uh, name in it. And there it is. Okay, we have a new function called invoke local password spray. So let's go ahead and call that function. And there we go, making a list of all the local users. We've creating a list for that. And now we're going to start to spray passwords. Current time is 318 and ooh, looks like we have a couple accounts disabled right now. Maybe that's our guest accounts, but all the others are probably gonna be beaten up. But now what we've done is we've tried to just hammer a password across all of the different user accounts. In fact, we could have like specified a password, you can use TAC password, and then I'll use, I don't know what, winter 2023 for this year. Let's see if we get anything. I don't know, maybe we can bring this to previous dates. I think winter 2020 might be, uh, yeah, specific to when this lab was created way back when. So there are a couple users that had that password, but now I have repeatedly beaten up the users on this account, the local accounts. The question is, is our poor person seam or our security information event management kind of centralized software here, at least the Windows event you are gonna be able to see that. Let's hop back over to the event viewer. I'm gonna hit F5 on my keyboard to refresh this. And there we go. Now we have 12 events and you can see, hey, a user account failed to log on. And is that gonna be taking a look at Frank? Yes, it is. Uh, let's see. Login was attempted using explicit credentials. Cool. We could actually see Frank is again the target here. Another, another, another. At least Frank is our honey user and we're able to get a little bit of visibility when someone is trying to target our machine because they're probably just, hey, spraying and praying across all the different user accounts and seeing what they might be able to break into. At least we've set up one little mousetrap and we know this and now we can detect that capability. And I gotta be honest, that's it. Hey, it was kind of simple, pretty quick, pretty easy, but that's all that we needed to do to be able to get that visibility and see when a threat actor might be beaten up a user or many users on this box. So look, no matter how simple, how small, maybe how trite or easy it might look like to set up oh, some cyber deception, whether again, it's a useless website or a share that's just used as a scapegoat, something that we can be able to trigger off of and detect, hey, is there evil? Is there malicious, nefarious activity in the environment?